much better. Time to play the game. Welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your co-host, Mike. With me, as always, is... Conquer Corey. Well, after we have banished the white from my console, I realized that my controller is also white. And we can't just have this, so we're going to rip this sucker apart and paint her. I did not know the black part of that controller popped out like that. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, it's nope. very easy to do. Actually, all I had to do was take my fingernail, pop up under there, and it snapped off. There is some wiggle you have to do on the tip when, uh, when you're pulling the top, the top of it out. You see the two points. Uh, just kind of wiggle the controller, and it comes right out. Now, there's two screws on the bottom that you have to remove. Um, she's a little screwdriver that gets that out. There's also two more screws on the top under the first two buttons, which... They're very easy to pop off. As you see, I flew one across the, <laughs> the table there. Is is that is that a the, the smaller Phillips head? Yes. Precision? Okay. Yes, it's a, you can use a regular Phillips head on that. You don't have to have a special tool. I didn't have to have a special tool. For what? <laughs> right? Heresy. <laughs> Sony using a standard? <laughs> They're like, ah, somebody's going to want to take this apart and paint it. Yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> Uh, once you get I, those I, two screws out, there's two clamps here you have to pop off. And once you do that, the back just pops off. Um, it's, you see me kind of struggling. I was kind of worried about breaking it, but honestly, it popped off pretty easy when I stopped being a wuss. <laughs> the next thing you really want to do is remove that battery. Um, I want to be careful trying to grab the edges of that. You don't want to pull on the wires too hard because you pull on the wires, you might pull them out of the connector. Just kind of reach in there and grab them and wiggle them around a little bit. Just be gentle with it. And for good measure, be sure to lick the battery. Yeah, lick the battery. Very important. <laughs> Get a comment down below. Why not lick that battery? <laughs> so you got two screws on either side there you got to remove. Pretty easy to do. And there's one in the center of the board that removes that back plate for the battery. It's really interesting inside there, seeing how everything's housed in there, um, how the sides, the controllers connect to the board. Uh, speaking of the connecting to the board, didn't you say one of your ribbon cables was cut? Yeah, that's something I noticed um, when I was going through here. Uh, you'll notice me looking at it later. One of my ribbon cables was halfway cut. It's the right-hand side there. Uh, couldn't get a good shot on the video of it. I don't know if it happened at the factory or what, but when I finally noticed it, I tried to slowly pull it out, and yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was just a, I'm worried about it having an issue in the future, so I... I'm going to replace the ribbon cable later, but I mean, it's working right now, so I can't get too upset about it. <laughs> no, don't worry. It, it'll break when you're playing Demon Souls. I, oh, I promise you. Probably. Here's me trying to figure out what I got to take apart next. I'm like just grabbing stuff randomly. Ugh. Mike, this is a simple controller. <laughs> <laughs> You have to pull that that's the front microphone that i just pulled out there on the bottom you have to pop that off and then it 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 tangles through the controller and out and around and you can finally pull it out of there it's kind of weird and now i'm pulling the ribbon cable out i bet you sweat you were sweating bullets when you did that oh i was very much so now under the board this is very important under the board there are two screws that hold the controller completely together so when you reach under there, pull the board up slightly. Be careful not to break those 
connectors into the the vibrator motors. Um, that's something I was really worried about doing the whole time. You can unsolder those, but I didn't have my soldering tools on me, and uh, I honestly didn't want to order some new ones. <laughs> Once you remove those two screws, the whole thing pops right out, and you can see it right there. Wow, that's interesting. I, I won't I won't lie. The whole time I was messing with this, I was uh, sweating bullets. <laughs> It looks very involved, probably to the point where I'm probably not going to paint my controller. <laughs> it wasn't that bad once I got it tore apart here. Um, you just have to pull that piece off and then you can pull the uh, the D-pad and the buttons out. The buttons pop out kind of one by one. I actually ordered a replacement set of buttons to put into here because the white buttons wouldn't match with the red that we're going to be painting this thing a little bit later. There is one issue with that. Uh, you have to cut a piece. Uh, the, the buttons are made for PlayStation 4 controller. They fit in here and they work great, but you have to uh, break off a little extra piece on each one of the buttons. That doesn't need to be there, and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Uh, I've got a little section there that I'll kind of show you like what I'm talking about. So everything pretty much pops out here, looks like, correct? Yeah, everything else just kind of pops out. Um, very simple. Or take everything out, everything apart. And here you got two screws you have to release on the uh, the, the D-pad to, not the D-pad, the uh, trackpad. And that pulls the rest of the, the light, uh, the light bar off and the backing. Now, this piece does not come off. Don't try to pull it off. <laughs> You will cause issues. Here I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to cover it so it doesn't get hit with paint. I eventually remember that I have some really good masking tape that I can run over it, which we'll see in a second. And when you when you painted it, did it did it impact the touch functionality at all? Not at all. I'm able to use it perfectly fine. Um, I was really worried about that. I thought this was going to end up being a. Uh, um, a cautionary tale video. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> don't do what I did. Don't paint the trackpad. But no, it works great. Uh, I, after I got it all painted and everything was done, I played with it for about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour on different games just to make sure everything worked. And everything works great. It's very responsive. Right, and now, so it looks like you're you're uh, covering it with tape, so that way you don't get any paint on the. Yes, this is. Uh, board. Be very careful here. Uh, you don't want to break that ribbon cable. Um, I'm trying to be, as you can see, I'm kind of being very careful pressing around it, so there's, I don't have a whole lot of force going onto that ribbon cable, because I don't have to order another one. <laughs> and you and, and tape is everything here, the right kind of tape to use. You do not want to use any kind of tape that has a strong adhesive on it. No. Because when you try to pull that tape off, it's going to rip that ribbon cable. Exactly. Uh, I use just 3M painter's tape. I had a bunch laying around from uh, when we painted my wife's computer. Make sure you get around the edges. It's very important. Make sure you, all the edges are, are creased real good. You have the board itself covered because you don't want to get paint on the board. Um, you don't want to mess it up at all. Something else I did afterwards is I ended up taping the front of the controller uh, where those black circles are where the analog sticks go through because uh, I just didn't want that black to get covered up. I didn't know if it would show through or not after it being painted. Now here, just like we did in the PlayStation 5, uh, painting, we're cleaning it, making sure there's nothing on there. Um, just using some cloth, um, some Windex, or just any good kind of cleaner you have. Just making sure our, our, there's nothing on there at all to mess it up. So the paint will adhere correctly. Yeah, you definitely don't want any oil from your hands getting on that. And if you notice how I'm holding it after I, I clean it, I'm making sure that I'm not touching the parts. I'm reaching inside. Or there's not going to be any paint.
Look at those manly hands. Mm. All right, now we're ready to give this thing a paint job. So I'm using the same prime, the same paint as I used for the PlayStation 5. Don't forget to give it a good shake. Shake it for about you know two to three minutes. Really make sure it's good and loose up in there. <laughs> Test the can away from your painting surface, just like Big Jim told you to. And then do some nice, even strokes. Just like we did in the PlayStation 5 video, we're gonna do some light coats on here, mini light coats. I think all together we did about four of them. Um, one thing here that you'll notice, I forgot to paint the buttons. <laughs> I don't know if I forgot them or if I decided I wanted to paint them at a later time. Um, either way, I had to pull the buttons out and painted them. The, the PlayStation button, the uh, two buttons on the side, the share and the options button. Uh, I had to pull them out and set them up in a way you can paint them. I recommend for those is to find a thick piece of cardboard because they'll stick inside of that cardboard. There's a, there's a, a button on the back of those or a little knob that you can stick in something that helps send them straight up so you can get a good, nice, even coat on them. That's me not over painting. You see they pop up here on the left hand side when I'm like, oh yeah, need to paint these. <laughs> I'm doing a different pattern now. I'm trying to vary my patterns just like we did on the PlayStation. Um, so we get a nice even coat on there. I want it to look good. A big thing, don't forget to read the back of your can. If you choose to use a different paint, it'll tell you what you can paint on. It'll tell you how often you need to put the new coats on, how long it's going to take to dry. It's all very important. Speaking of which, how long did it take these to dry, Mike? Each coat uh, had to wait 10 minutes in between. And then once 10 minutes had passed, it came back and laid another coat. It was good to touch after, I think it was an hour or 30 minutes. I have to double check. Um, But this initial part, it just took them. I waited about 10 minutes and came back and did another, another coat. So we're trying to get the edges. I noticed that I wasn't getting the edges as good on some of the controller parts. <laughs> it's a little harder to hit than the uh, the flat or the curved flat surface of the PlayStation was. And now. It's been, I think it's been about an hour. It's time for me to throw down the glaze coat. So I'm not going to lie, in the back corner there, you see the white. I ordered a different kind of primer, uh, or not primer, but a clear coat. Originally, I was going to put on, ordered it from Walmart. Went and picked it up, brought it out, shook the can, did my test spray lines, realized it was white instead of actually the primer that I'd ordered. So. First rule, check your paint before you use it. <laughs> Second rule, <laughs> do your tests to make sure you don't get any overspray on there. And that just double checks and makes sure you're actually using the right stuff. <laughs> so I went back and used the clear, uh, thick glaze like we used on the PlayStation. Um, your initial coat, you have you do a nice light coat on there, get it nice and wet. And then you have to wait about uh, two to three minutes and then come back and do a nice thick wet coat on it and let that sit. Now, the bottle of this says you need to wait 24 hours for it to dry. You need to wait, I had to wait 48 hours for it to completely dry. But, I mean, after that it was pretty much easy going. Uh, I put the controller back together. Um, I didn't shoot that for you because it was basically be taking it apart in reverse. These are the buttons I was telling you about that I use custom. If you look here, these are set up the exact same way as you would put them in the controller. 
you'll notice that there is an extra tab on the replacement button I have in the bottom right hand corner. I had to rip that tab off on the black button and then it just slid right into the controller like the other buttons do. They're the same height, they're the same slant, works perfectly. Well, and that's about that. So let's uh, roll that footage. Woo! Much better. Oh, needs to be charged.